we see that the 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 integration of the uh, the, the the micro and the DAS and even into the the femto in the, inside the homes. This is uh, an, uh, uh, a difficult task that we see that it will be um, the 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 focus of the the different operators and alongside with the vendors to to make sure that the user experience the quality of experience for the user across the different areas will be the same. So right now, for example, if you are in the micro network and if the network is not densified enough, then you start to get a certain uh, capacity and data rate that will be different than you start to get into the um, uh, uh, convention center. You know, today, for example, um, we have a lot of people that are using the network and start to see that if the the, the convention network or the venue is not prepared to cover this capacity, then there will be a big, big issue there. Some of the challenges that, from my perspective, is um, everybody learning to get along together in the space and being able to see a network from, from end to end and to manage it end to end. Some of us, I, from looking around at the audience here, I recognize a lot of y'all out there is that you know, we grew up in a world where we had a fantastic element management system. We are still evolving, as in my, at least in my opinion, in, in the DAS space and, and in, you know, in this converged space is, is to, get to a, get to a point where you can manage that network end to end. One of the things that you do with some of the integrated Wi-Fi networks and DAS networks and, and license band products is you now start mixing public and private services over the same infrastructure which is quite different than how it was before. Used to there would be a private network inside these venues and there'd be a, uh, a license and then there'd be the license band product that the cellular carriers that might have come in. Either they put in their own DAS or some other third provider put a DAS in and then they all bought Spectrum and operated on that. What's happened is, is the point that you're making is with the growth in data and all the things that are going on, the demand on the network is so significant that there hasn't been enough carriers or enough equipment put in, which is causing a whole rebuild, rethink of the whole network. So right now there's a, it, it's very expensive, it's very time consuming. I mean, Paula could tell us stories about, I, I know about some of them because I've been in, 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 in some of them, about how long it takes and how much it costs. And um, so it's, it's quite a challenge. And it's quite a challenge in that the handsets and the demand for network uh, capacity has went up way faster than the ability to get it built. And uh, so it's a mad scramble to catch up right now. There's there's several different business models that are out there. Right. And AT&T is taking the position that, you know, for for the benefit of our customers, for our customers, AT&T's customers, is that we're paying. That's it. We are. You know, it is, uh, it's worth it from, from our perspective. You know, there are some, some neutral host options that, that can come along there, but whenever you, for, for that customer experience and for what, for what AT&T stands for, it's worth it to us to make that investment. The user experience and um, when the user is losing a call inside the, 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 the venue when he's watching a game, uh, he, he doesn't, you know, he just remember this incident more than even if he doesn't have any cold drop outside this. So this is a very important thing uh, to to allow them to have this experience. That's number one. Number two, now providing the the um, uh, the high data rate and you know the 3G and the 4G in their uh, hands and with all those smartphones and the tablets that they have, even though they are watching the game, but they are doing some things over there. This will start to trigger a lot of applications. And we started to see some of them happening right now where some of the folks who are on the, on the arena are just doing some kind of upstreaming and catching some of the, the video clips that are unique from their perspective and then starts to create some kind of a, a, a society of creating, you know, the, looking into the, 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 the experience of the game, you know, a little bit differently. With enabling the technology and the data rates and the devices in the hands of the consumer, you start to see that there will be a lot of innovations that is coming later on, even if AT&T or the other operators are paying the bill right now, but they can recoup all of this later on once the, the user starts to you know, uh, get in, attached to the technology and to the devices. You have three or four major carriers, three at least, that as I think Greg said before, all do things a little differently. 
and each one of them is going to want to make sure their system works the best it can work, and you know they're not going to put they're not going to sacrifice that for the other guy. So the challenges of getting along are not just because they don't play well in the sandbox. It's because there are legitimate issues that have to be settled that uh, it's hard to do, and I think it's going to become even. A, a greater challenge, although the, the reward is much greater too, when we start introducing public safety and the other real service providers of wireless services out there that would like to share the DAS, would like to share the network themselves also with different frequencies and spectrum, uh, it just gets more challenging. But of course the reward is, is, a, is a multiple more rewarding also. So.